Our sermon is going to come from the first chapter of Job, the book of Job. So if you will get your Bibles together when we get down to that order of service, we're going to ask that you follow it with us as we teach and preach the Word of God. May we all stand, please. I will try.
time our deacons are coming and we're going to have two scriptures and two prayers. And for those of you that are joining us, we want you to pray with us as we do our devotion and we dedicate everything to the Lord. Amen. Morning. According to the book of Psalms, verse Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, not standing in the way of sinners, not seated in the center of the strong, but delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law though he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the river of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaves also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the shaft which the wind driveth the way. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, not settle in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Here, Richard, in past verse number, book of Psalms, the word of the Lord has already been blessed. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven. Feed us until we won't no more. We come this morning once again to tell you thank you, sir. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for waking us up early this morning. Thank you, Lord. You able us to sit up. You able us to get up. Then you able us to look around and see that everyone was doing all right. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we want to tell you thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you for taking care of all we've done. Thank you, Jesus. As we travel up and down the dangerous highway. Now, Lord, you brought us back to your place of worship one more time. And Lord, we want to tell you thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for being so good and kind to us. We thank you for the food you let us have to eat this week and the appetite you've given us to eat. We thank you for your friends. We thank you for your enemies. We thank you for our ups and we thank you for our downs. We thank you for our trials and tribulations. Lord, we want to tell you thank you. Realize that you've been mighty good to us. And not only you've been good, but you still feel good. The reason I know because every time we turn around with you, you keep on blessing us in spite of things happening on us. Lord, we just want to tell you thank you now. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless the sick and the bereaved family. Bless everyone who sounds my voice this morning. Bless our pastor this morning and strength of way we can build him up way going down. He's been laboring for 31 years and we have to give him extra strength. Thank you. Give him what he needs. You know what he needs better than we know what to ask for. And I don't bless our pastor. Bless all preachers that carry your word and all churches open in your name. Please. Lord, we want to tell you thank you now. We give it all to you in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. 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 chapter, the 4 through 10 verses. I'm reading from the New Standard Bible, New American Standard, and it reads as follows. The Lord has given me the tongue of disciples, that I may know how to sustain the weary ones with the word. He wakened me morning by morning. He awakens me, awakens my ear to listen to his disciples. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not disobedient, nor did I turn back. I gave my back to those who strike me, and my cheeks to those who pluck out the beard. I did not cover my face from humiliation and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore. Disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be ashamed. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend me? Who will contend to me? Let us stand up each other. Who has a case against me? Let him draw near to me. Behold, the Lord helps me. Who is he who condemns me? Behold, 
they will wear it out like a garment. The mouth of moth will eat them. Who is among you that fears the Lord? And obeys the voice of his servant, that walks in darkness and no light. Let him trust in the name of the Lord and rely on his God. I read through Isaiah, the 50th chapter, the 4th through the 10th verses. The bow heads for prayer. Father, we come as humble as we know how. Thank you, you for the many blessings that you bestowed upon us. Lord, we come asking, asking you, Lord, to continue to guide and protect us as we go through this pandemic situation. Lord, we don't know what tomorrow brings, and we know that you hold the future. You are the beginning and the end. The Alpha and the Omega. Lord, we just want to say thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you for being God. Thank you. And God all by yourself. Oh, yeah. Lord, there's a special prayer out for our children. We don't know how this thing's going to work out, but you know. Bless them as they learn, whether virtually or at home. Bless the teachers as they try to bring forth the knowledge. Bless our parents that they'll be able to work and take care of their household. Lord, we got a mighty request this morning. Bless our pastor, whom you allow to serve us in this church as your servant for 31 years. We thank you. Lord, we ask that you bless those who believe this morning. Let them know that you didn't do anything wrong. Lord, we ask again that you Bless every church that's open, every household that's open in your name. Bless, Lord. These and all other blessings we ask in our God and seen the Son of Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
presence of God. He is everywhere at the same time. If there are persons that you wish to have a prayer for, would you please call that name wherever you are? If you're watching this, you call that name. We want to go to God in behalf of all of the requests. At this time, we call the name of God. Amen. We lift all those things up to our Christ. God does answer prayer. Sometimes God says yes. Sometimes God says no. Sometimes God says wait. The waiting is for our benefit. If the Lord were to give us some of the things that we ask for, we would neglect to give him the credit for it. God has to mature us to a point that he can get us where he wants us so he can bless us. Jesus said, I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Would you stand as we go to pray at this particular time of my entry on God day if he would again, if he would come to the mic and bless us with a prayer. Some of our children are able to go back to school, some are not, and some are learning at home. And we just pray for the parent. This is new to all of us, the new normal, I call it, that we're going to. So we're going to ask God to intervene and ask God to bless. And God can foresee what we cannot see. We can see to the corner. But God can see around the corner. Let us bow and pray at this time. Let us pray. Lord and Father, thank you God for another blessed day that you allow us to see. We thank you, God, Lord, for another blessed service that we are able to come to, Lord. We thank you, God, for being able to reach the world. We thank you, God, for being able to, Lord, to deliver your word and to deliver the song and we worship you and we thank you for it right now. And God, we come to you with our prayer request. Lord, as the scripture says, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And God, now while we're here praying, Lord, we ask you, Lord, that you would just touch uh, people who are listening right now. Oh Lord, there's somebody at home who is in the sick bed. There's someone who is in the death bed. Lord, there are those in the hospital. And God, there are those who this might be the last day that they would make it here on this earth. And God, we thank you, Lord, right now, how you are still blessing your people. God, we ask you to honor our requests, Lord Jesus. We ask you, Lord, if you would change the, the direction of this country right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We ask you, God, that you would just let your word just penetrate through this whole world right now in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. Let, 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 let your healing power, Lord, just come forth and heal those who are sick, Lord. Those who are, are depressed in their minds, Lord. We ask you to deliver, to deliver them right now. Give them joy, Lord Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Those who cannot walk, Lord Jesus. Those who probably don't have a, 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 a mouth to talk right now. We ask you, God, to change their hearts in the mighty name of Jesus. Bless them, Lord, to redeem your people. Lord, let miracles come forth right now for your people in Jesus' name. We thank you, God, Lord, for your word. Lord, we always thank you, God, for the pastor of this church. Lord, we honor you for the pastor of this church. We honor you, Lord, for the people of this church. And we thank you, God, that you've given them a heart, Lord, to be here this morning to minister to the world. And we thank you for it right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, let everything that comes out of our mouth, Lord, be to your glory, Lord. Lord, let everything be done to your glory, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. God, Lord, let every song be to your glory, Lord. Let, let, let every scripture, Lord, let every word that come out of our mouth be to your glory in the mighty name of Jesus. And God, we ask you to bind the devil right now who is trying to stop every good thing from happening. Lord, you can bind Satan right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We cast him out. We, we command him to flee in the mighty name of Jesus. So that your word, so that your spirit, that your power, Lord Jesus, can have a, a free reign in our life. 
Lord, bless us in our everyday life, Lord Jesus. Bless us in our jobs, Lord. Lord Jesus, be a shield and a protection to us, Lord. Your people need your protection, Lord, right now. And we ask you, Lord, to protect us and keep us safe, Lord Jesus. As we go by our normal daily lives, Lord, to keep us safe from this virus, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. Oh, God, give us perfect health, Lord. God, touch our lungs, Lord Jesus. Touch our respiratory system, Lord Jesus. Be a shield and a, and a buckler for our people right now. And God, we're going to give your name the praise and the honor, Lord, for everything that you're going to do. We you to bless the, 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 the message that's coming forth. Lord, let the message be a, a, a message of power that can, that can give your people hope in the mighty name of Jesus. And God, we're going to glorify your name for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord of God. Our message will come from Job chapter 1. For those of you have your Bibles, we're going to sing a verse of Amazing Grace. And after that, we will bring the message of hope in times like these. Amen.
When the day came for the heavenly beings to appear before the Lord, Satan was there among them. The Lord asked him, what have you been doing? Satan answered, I have been walking here and there, roaming around the earth. Did you notice my servant, Job, the Lord asked? There is no one on earth as faithful and as good as he is. He worships me and is careful not to do anything evil. Satan replied, would Job worship you if he got nothing out of it? You have always protected him and his family and everything he owns. You bless everything he does, and you've always given him enough cattle to fill the whole country. But now suppose you take away everything he has, he will curse you to your face. All right, the Lord said to Satan, everything he has is in your power, but you must not hurt Job himself. So Satan left. One day when Job's children were having a feast in the house of the oldest brother, a messenger came running to Job. We were plowing the fields with the oxen. He said that the donkeys were in a nearby pasture. Suddenly the Sabines attacked and stole them all. They killed every one of your servants except me. I am the only one who escaped to tell you. Before he had finished speaking, another servant came and said, Lightning struck the sheep and the shepherds and killed them all, and I am the only one who escaped to tell you. Before he had finished speaking, another servant came and said, Three bands of Chaldean raiders attacked us, took away the camels and killed all your servants except me. I am the only one who escaped to tell you. Before he had finished speaking, another servant came and said, your children were having a feast at the home of your oldest son. When a storm swept in from the desert, it blew the house down and killed them all. I am the only one who escaped to tell you. Then Job got up, tore his clothes in grief. He shaved his head and threw himself face downward on the ground. He said, I was born with nothing, and I will die with nothing. The Lord gave, and now he has taken away. May his name be praised in spite of everything that has happened. Job did not sin by blaming God. My subject this morning is, it is a setback for a setup for a blessing. A setback for a setup for a blessing. Amen. It was a setback. All of us are used to being blessed, and when we're blessed, we're happy. When we're healthy, healthy we're happy. When our children are doing good, we're happy. When we have money in the bank, we're happy. We have nice clothes to wear. When our grandchildren are doing well, when our aunts and aunties, uncles and all are doing well, we are happy. But sometimes life will throw us a curveball. And rather than it being a straightforward pitch, it will be a curve. And a curve will sometimes give you a set back. Paul says it like this, in whatsoever state I'm in, I have learned to be content. If you don't have what you think you ought to have, that's just a setback. And all God is doing is giving you a setback so he can set you up for a blessing. When we notice this particular book, we discover that there was a man by the name of Job. He was the richest man in the East. Now, let me say something about riches. Can I tell everybody here, it's all right to be rich, but don't let the riches have 
you. I wish I could get an amen on that. It's all right to have a little riches, but never ever let the riches have you. The Bible says that Job was so complacent with what he had that the Bible says he blessed God and every day he would tell God thanks. Can I tell all of us here that no matter what the day brings, whether it's good or whether it brings some evil things, you ought to at least have the audacity and the courtesy and the gratitude to tell God thank you. Well, I didn't get the job, Lord, thank you. Can I tell you that that's just a setup because God has a better job for you. Quit looking at the closed door so long and you will neglect to find the door that God is opening for you. God closes the door, he sets you up, sets you back, and gives you a better job than what you have. And just in case you didn't know where your blessing come from, the Bible says, I will lift up my eyes unto the hill from which cometh my help. All, can I, can everybody say it with me? All, all of my help comes from the Lord. Not some of it, not most of it, not 99%, but all of my help comes from the Lord. The Bible says Job was blessed with children. Children are a gift from God. The Lord had blessed him with seven sons and three daughters. This book is a book about a good man who suffers total disaster. May I suggest to all of us don't get too comfortable and don't become too complacent when the Lord allows you to get on top of the mountain. Can I tell you that God has some more mountains for you to reach? And in order to get from mountain A to mountain B, you got to come down and go back in the valley. All of our work is not at the church building, but when we leave these four walls, that's when the work begins. We are a servant of the living God. God is not dead, he's an alive God, but he uses us to have his feet, his hands, and we are to speak for the Lord. God sets us back sometimes so that he can set us up, so that he can bless us. Job, we discover, loses everything that he has. He loses all of his children. When I read this particular chapter, there was something in here that really struck me. God, Job did not blame God for the death of his children. There are some people that say the Lord took my brother, he took my uncle, he took my sister, he took my daddy. God does not take. Let me tell you what God does since y'all ask. God gives and then he receives back to himself because belong to the Lord. The Bible says in Psalm 44 and 1, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof and they, that's all of us, we all belong to God. And when God gets ready to come get us, we don't want our husbands, we don't want our mothers, our fathers, God come gets us when he gets ready. But I want us just to notice that all of these things that happen, God gave Satan permission to do it. We cannot understand everything that God loves. But I have discovered, my brothers and sisters, in my lifetime, we have got to accept what God allows. If God allows trouble, Paul says it like this, all things work together for your good. To them that love the Lord, the call according to is perfect. So whatever happened in life, whether it's good or bad, it's working out for your good. God is just allowing a set up 
a setback for a setup so he can bless us. There were a series of poetic dialogues that the author shows us about God's friend, Job's friends. They came to console him. The Bible says that when they got to where Job was, they stayed seven days and seven nights, and nobody offered to speak, to ask Job about his calamity. I think there's a message in that for all of us. When somebody is sick with a disease, don't go to them and tell them, say, well, my mama, my mama died from what you got. My daddy passed away with the ailment that you got. People don't need to hear about negative things. They need to hear about a positive God who's a healer. Maybe you don't know a God that's still in the healing business. God can still heal the world of this coronavirus. Heal my people. Everybody's not his people. If the church folk by themselves would humble themselves, we could turn the world upside down. God has given us everything that we need to heal. This, this is a suicide world. Watching the news on yesterday, there were fires in California. And then there are floods in other parts of the world. Wouldn't it be nice if the flood could cover the fire and everybody could go home and be blessed for it? Sometimes I believe God allows things to happen so that we have a setback so we can focus upon Him. Remember now what we've done in America. We have taken prayer out of school, took prayer out, and gangs and dope went in. And really, if you think about it, we've taken prayer out of a lot of our churches. We don't have prayer meetings like we used to. People used to come and pray and ask God to lead us day by day, but we've taken prayer out of the church. But I thank God that we can't take prayer out of our hearts. You ought to pray without ceasing, the Bible says. You ought to pray early in the morning when you get up out of the bed. You ought to tell God, thank you for letting me get up out of your bed. Yeah, I know you bought it. I know it's a nice looking bed. Got a nice mattress, firm, and everything. But it's the Lord's bed. It was the Lord's money that you bought it with. Everything. Somebody shout everything. Everything belongs to God. Everything belongs to Him. My brothers and my sisters, Job lost all of his animals. What did he have? He had a great possession. He had 7,000 sheep. Sheep are dumb animals. Did y'all know sheep were dumb animals? I discovered, uh, I used to pass it down in Mississippi and I found out from farmers that Sheep are animals that if you slaughter one and the next one in his line, he'll walk right up and be slaughtered. The Bible says Jesus was dead as a lamb, dumb before the slaughter. And he opened not his mouth. Isaac was like this. All oh, we like sheep have gone astray. All of us have gone out on the way. There were some things that we thought we knew. The Bible said there's a way that seems right. In the book of Proverbs, the Bible said there's a way that seems right unto the man, but the end thereof is the way of death. Sometimes you think you're doing right and you're doing wrong. The apostle Paul thought he was doing right when he was persecuting Christian folk. But on his way to the masters, God knocked him to the ground. And he asked the question, who are thou, Lord? He said, I am Jesus whom you persecute. 
Sometimes the faith is going right. And yet, we need the Bible. We need the Word of God. It's a light unto our feet. It's a lamp to our pathway. We need God's Word to know when we are doing the right and when we are doing the wrong. Because our righteousness, the Bible says this, is as filthy as I don't care how good you think your righteousness is. The Bible says, God says, your righteousness is as filthy rags. Job lost all of his sheep, all of his donkeys, all of his cattle, and all of his children. Ten funerals at one time. Boy, that was a setback. Some of us get angry when we lose our job. You know, this coronavirus, a lot of people lost their jobs. Instead of us going to God, we're going everywhere trying to find answers. The answer is not in the government. The answer is in the Lord. This is just a setback, y'all. Maybe God is trying to see which one of us is going to hold on to him. Maybe God is trying to see who's going to turn their back on him and just give up. Don't you throw in the towel. Don't you go to the Mississippi River to jump off and kill yourself. Y'all yeah, remember back in the day when we didn't have nothing. It was the Lord that blessed us. And what little did we have, we shared with one of them. But nowadays, the Lord has blessed us with more than we've ever had in our lives. And we become selfish. We become self-centered. We think we're better than other folks because we're living in certain neighborhoods, driving certain cars. But you know better than nobody. All of us came from the dust of the earth. Dust thou art, and to dust thou shalt return. I was looking at a, a glass table in my house that I cleaned off. The doors were clogged. A few days later, there's dust there again. How in the world did the dust get in? Nobody likes dust. Housewives don't like dust. They dust their furniture. And a few days later, the dust comes right back. Quit bragging on yourself, talking about how good you are. You just dust. And that's where we're going back. We're going back to the dust of the earth. But one thing I got to brag about God, God breathed in our nostrils and dust became a living soul. We're living with souls that inhabit these bodies. Can I tell everybody here under the sound of my voice, these bodies are just temporary. We used to stand up straight at attention, and now time will bend us over a little bit. Time will dim our eyesight. We have to have glasses now. Time will make our running steps short steps. We're just temporary here for a little while. While we're here, we need to get acquainted with the Lord. <laughs> Somebody ought to say hallelujah. When we get acquainted with God, then God can bless us. Notice that Job was rich. He had everything going for him. But we got to be careful. Watch this. God allows Satan to walk up and down on the earth, seeking who he can devour. The Bible says when the heavenly beings came, to present themselves before God, it says that Satan came also. Don't you tell me that rascal will not come to church. If the angels come before God and he comes with the angels, then surely he's going to come with human beings. We just call it Osufu. Osufu will come into church, y'all. 
Oh, so food wants to be seen. You got to be careful when people become arrogant in church. The Bible says God can use humble people. Sometimes we get so high that we think we're better than other people. Oh, I've been with the Lord longer than you have. You need to learn what I know about God. All of us are in the same boat. We are ever learning about God. And if you live to wake up tomorrow morning, there's something else you can learn about the Lord. I look at how God changes seasons, and, and it, it's amazing to me. God will strip down trees in the fall of the year. And all those green leaves, some of them turn orange, and some of them turn yellow, and some of them turn red. Look like God just takes a paintbrush and tells one tree, you're going to be yellow, and one you're going to be red, and you're going to be bronze. That's the kind of God we serve. And then all of the leaves fall. And then in the wintertime, everything looks like it's dead. But oh, come springtime. It's a, it's, a, it, it, it's a glimpse of the resurrection. There's a rising. There's a renewing. There's a flower. There's a tree. There's grass changing. Because it's a glimpse of the resurrection. Jesus said, I am the resurrection. I am the life. It looks dead in the wintertime, but oh, if the Lord lets you live to see the springtime, everything is going to come to life. Now, can I tell you that God permits things to happen that we don't understand? God even allowed his son to be tempted by the devil. The Bible says Jesus, after he was baptized, and that Holy Spirit drove him in the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. God gives us those setbacks so he can set us up to bless us. Oh, you know, Mr. Amen, spot that. God sets us back to set us up so he can bless us. Do you want to be blessed? If you want to be blessed, you got to welcome trouble. You got to welcome evil. You got to welcome despair because God is just getting them ready for that great day. When all of us children will be together. When we won't have to die no more, we will be with the Lord. How long? Forever. And when you look at the word of forever, it does not end. It just goes on and on and on. You know that, that commercial about the never written matter? But that has nothing to do with like eternity. Eternity does not end. The Bible says there was another day that the angelic group went before God and Satan came again. And God was able to bring on Job. God will make a break. Can God break on you? Can you say no to sin? Can you follow the way of righteousness? Can you lift God up? Jesus said, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men up. We can't draw nobody. God is the drawer. Say this said, well, yeah, Give me another shot at Job. See, you got to watch the rest. We're going to keep on coming. As long as you live, there's going to be some temptations in life. Jesus was even tempted as we are. The Bible says, but he was without sin. He says, let me touch his body. And the Lord said, go ahead. But don't you kill him. You can get so sick. I've seen, I've been in the hospital, been in homes where people were so sick, they were wanting to die. Job was sick from his head to his toe. He even had sores, pus was running out of his body. He was sick. He even asked God to let him die. 
He said, oh, if I could just speak. But see, he was being sent back more and more and more. But see, the God that Job said, do everything, he knows everything. And when you get to the end of the book, you discover something that was unusual, something that was miraculous. Job had twice as much. See, the setback was nothing but a setup so God could give him more than what he had. The Bible says God gave him twice as many animals, twice as many sheep, twice as many cattle. But when I read that, I thought about it. I said, now, how can Job have twice as many children and the Lord only blessed him with seven more children? And I thought about it, and the Holy Spirit revealed it like this. He had seven in heaven and seven on earth. <laughs> fourteen. Job had fourteen children. Seven in glory and seven on the earth. We serve a God, y'all, that will allow things to be set back. Don't worry. In America, whatever you lost, God can restore it twice as much as what you had. You might have lost your unemployment, your job. But if you hold to God's unchanging hand and stay in His will, God is just setting you up so that He can bless you. God wants to bless all of us. Blessed is the man that walk not in the counsel of the Father, nor sitting in the seat of the scorn. Stand in the way of sin. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. Meditate on God day and night. And you're just being set up for a blessing. Those of you that are watching us today by YouTube, Facebook, or however, those of you that are here, we want to allow you an opportunity to come to Christ. That's the purpose of churches. Jesus says, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundant. God wants us to live. Above all, he says, I wish you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prosper. The book of Peter says, God is not slack concerning his promise. But he does not push that anybody will perish. Somebody else said, Hallelujah. God wants us saved. Those of you watching us, wherever you are, you can be saved right now. Don't have to come to the church building. Don't have to get on the mourner's bench. You can be saved on any bench. You can be saved on the bench at the bus stop. Hallelujah, somebody. The God that we serve is a good God. As we have a soul, you're here or wherever you are, when you come to Christ, as we listen to this song, you can give your life. Now you shall confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You shall be of my father's house is open. Go to the heart of all friends in my life. And sometimes it's hard to tell the night from the
encourage you to join our church where we preach about Jesus Christ and not the personality of the pastor. We're just occupying this position until the Lord comes back. It's his position. He's the author and the finisher of all our faith. Until Wednesday morning at 10 a.m., may the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you real good. At this time, we take you to our secretary for the announcements of the week.